Hey, it's Ray with National Metal Bands. Today is March the 1st, and we're filming down here as usual in the Kramer showroom. I've got a special guest who's got a lot of experience throughout the international metal community. Stick around to see who it is. Nashville Metal Bands is sponsored by Kramer Guitars. Hey, what's going on? It's Ray with Nashville Metal Bands. Once again, kicking it at the Kramer Showroom in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you so much to Kramer for sponsoring us and for allowing us to spend some time out here with these beautiful instruments. Uh, before we get to our guest today, who happens to be an icon of sorts, uh, he's got a name in the international metal community and has helped had a hand in the metal scene out in California. I'll explain in a few minutes from back in the 80s, but we'll get to that. Before I do, I want to remind you that the Nashville Metal Band Series 2 t-shirts will be coming out very, very soon. We are working on the design and we're going to be looking for bands who would like to be on the back of those things. You know they turn people into walking billboards, so I know you want in on it. Trust me, you do. Okay, without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest. This guy has been around the music industry as a whole for decades. Uh, arguably, he is known as the godfather of Christian metal, uh, but as you'll see in some of the conversation, this man has a hand in the international music community well outside the scope of those who follow a certain faith. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to my friend and mentor, Pastor Bob Beeman. Thank How you. you doing? Thank you. Great. Thanks. Great. Thanks so much for coming out. Well, and... it's great to be here, and it's a little hard to pay attention. I know. I mean, <laughs> I, I'd like one of these and one of these, and you know, and you can't see, but all around us are just the like the history of Epiphone and Gibson. Here. That's right. That's right. And glad to see that they brought the the Kramer brand back oh, alive. Beautiful. And, and obviously, one of the things we really appreciate about Kramer is that they are catering to the metal community, whereas some of the others are a little bit more broad, but uh, how yeah. can you not? <laughs> just, just so you know, this is my favorite one right here. <laughs> <laughs> a nice assault. We'll see if yes. we can gift wrap it there for you. There you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, for those who might not really know you by name, mm -hmm. um, obviously your first name is Pastor, and that's going to throw a couple of my people right up pastor, front. My first name is Pastor. My last name is Bob. <laughs> you know, seriously? A lot of people don't even know my last name. I That's never right. Use it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but for those who would go, Pastor Bob, well, why are we talking to some guy named Pastor Bob? Yeah. Obviously, the long hair, the beard, the tattoos. They go, okay, this is a metal yeah. guy of some sort. Something's but, wrong here. But, <laughs> in a very good way. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you give us a little bit of background about where you came from and your okay. ties to the metal sure. community? Well, I've been pastorized for thirty-seven years now. Okay. I've been a pastor, and you know, I was fifteen years old when I really had an idea to uh, to make, um, I guess, uh, a little rock and roll history with bringing some Christian lyrics and Christian people into the industry, which has been really fun. So uh, Christian Rock was born, and I've been involved with it for over 40 years now, and, and we've gone from rock to punk to metal to you know, a lot of different styles. But, um, you know, it's, it's always been on the edge, and it's always been a little... Uh, controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, these days I'm working more with um, probably death metal, you know, some of the real hardcore stuff. Uh, but it's it's great. It's been a it's been a good forty years. And a lot of where you're working now is overseas. I know right. you spend a lot of your time in the past few years anyway, you've been spending yeah. a lot of time in Sweden and Switzerland and places like that. Yeah. We um, we do festivals all around the world in quite a few countries. And, uh, you know, metal, it's, there was a time in the United States when you didn't hear a whole lot of things about metal. That's really not true in the rest of the world. Right. And so uh, I've been very active in a lot of other countries for years now. We've done a lot of festivals, um, working with a lot of bands. But it's also exciting to see metal starting to come back again. There is a resurgence, is yes. There really is. And even a, a little, you know, some of the, there's some really good new stuff out there, but some of the classic stuff's coming back, too. Speaking of the classics, yeah. throwing back into the 80s, where mm -hmm. you kind of found a name for yourself amongst the metal community. You were running a church out in California called Sanctuary. Right, we started Sanctuary in 85. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were kind of the only... Um, I guess religious aspect of the metal community during those times. So, so I was the the go-to guy for counseling or weddings or funerals. Or, you know, <laughs> and there were a few of each. And there were a lot of all of those. So, and, and you know, those days were real interesting, Ray. Those days in Hollywood, 
uh, at uh, you know the Roxy and and Gazzari's and right. you know the whiskey and all those places. You know, I spent so many Friday and Saturday nights just walking the strip and uh, listening to these little bands called Motley Crue and Skid Row and you know all of the bands. And everybody was just starting then. It was a it was a very cool beginning of you know what historically now has been a, a pretty big deal. But uh, and we were there at the of, beginning. Speaking of starting and at the beginning, yeah. Sanctuary and yourself have had a hand in helping to start the career of a number of bands. At least one who was a household name, but several who are also household names well, in the Christian community. So yeah. what bands have you been working with? Well, of that course, people would know. Michael Sweet Striper was our very first worship leader in the church. Uh, and then Jim from Baron Cross took over from there, and Baron Cross has done well. But you know, um, POD I think had their very first concert in the church, mm -hmm. which was cool. And uh, we've had others that have uh, that have come out of the church that have been pretty successful. It's really been exciting though to watch all of that happen, and and to realize that Christian music didn't have to be boring and behind the times. Right. You know, we. Ne never together. mind grandma saying, are you really going to play drums in church? Yeah, we got full on metal. <laughs> you know, we put together one of the first uh, growling bands, you know, in 87. Was that Vengeance? Time ago. Vengeance, yeah. Yep. Vengeance so we were way ahead of the times then, yeah. too. So, you know, that's been just a lot of fun to, to really be current and do some good music. Right. Now, I know there are certain, because you do uh, mentor and counsel with certain bands, that yeah. there's, you know, certain things that you can and can't say, but mm -hmm. uh, again, just to lend credibility to those who are like, okay, so this guy works in the Christian side, but you, you're involved with a number of artists who aren't explicitly Christian artists as well. Well, I am, and, you know, there are a lot of Christian artists in some of the big bands, mm -hmm. of you course. know, and I, I could name some of the bands, and I, and I won't for their privacy, but... You know, it's it's been uh, really cool to see that. Yeah, I think all of us have kind of a tendency to want to, you know, kind of connect with something spiritual, and you know, a lot of these guys have done that. And you know, it's just interesting over the years to see some of these guys that I knew back then that were, you know, that called themselves Satanists <laughs> that are Christians now. Wow! You know? And it's been a, a real turnaround. So it's been nice to watch. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we appreciate that you've had a hand in that. Thanks. And uh, you've got a couple of other things going on. We, we talked about some of these people that maybe had different needs in their lives, and, and they've mm. come to have those realized. Uh, but coming up in the next segment, you do quite a bit with some people who have some pretty serious day-to-day -day mm. needs. And yeah. so we're going to get right into that in just a minute. Okay. All right? Make sure that you stick around, and thanks for watching Nashville Metal Bands. We'll be right back. Are you enjoying our conversation with Pastor Bob Beeman? Did you know that you can check out Pastor Bob daily? Literally, you can. He has a video podcast that takes just five minutes called Pastor Bob Daily. Just go to youtube.com slash Pastor Bob Beeman. Hey, thanks for sticking around. This is Ray with Nashville Metal Bands. Once again, sitting here with my friend, Pastor Bob Beeman. And we've been discussing a little bit of the old school, but uh, let's let's get into a little bit of some of the things that you've got going on right now. Sure. Now, some of this doesn't necessarily pertain directly to music, but as we'll find, the reality is, is music has a way of creeping mm. its way into almost everything. You know, and Ray, music is a part of our lives, no mm -hmm. matter what. And we are in Nashville, after all. <laughs> yeah, the Music City does have and a way. <laughs> this is the place where people come to realize their dreams. Yeah. And uh, a whole lot of musicians... You know, they're a, they're a big fish in a small pond where they come from, and they come to Nashville and realize they're a small fish in a big pond, right. and they get stuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I know that you see those types of things every day, whether it's a musical dream or not. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell the people a little bit about Bridge Bunch? Well, Bridge Bunch is a ministry I started, gosh, it's been five or six years now, I guess. And uh, we started it basically underneath a, a, a big bridge right by downtown Nashville mm -hmm. uh, to uh, feed the homeless. And uh, among the homeless people are all kinds of 
different types of people, a whole lot of musicians, you know. Um, Talk about the musician who, you know, stereotypically is trying to work his way through playing gigs and, and, and selling pizzas on the side. I mean, this is the well, next absolutely. level, really, if you think about it. And that is more typical in Nashville than anything, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But then there's the other side of it. And, you know, it's, it's not news to anyone listening that these are difficult economic times. Right. And so when the economy takes a dive, you know, music is sometimes the first thing to go. Right. It's the toughest thing to do. So, you know, it isn't unusual to have people come through the line and to, and to watch them as they're walking away and see a pair of drumsticks in their pockets. Or, <laughs> or you know, yeah, I've and seen we it. have some guys bringing their guitars with them, yeah. you know, because they come to eat and they go back on the streets and try to make a few dollars, you know, playing the guitar. So we do have a lot of musicians that come through. By the way, we're, we're currently feeding uh, around 3,500 people every month. Wow. So there's a lot of people on the streets right now. And that's not just people that are at that one location. Uh, the Bridge Bunch mm. Ministry and Sanctuary International, you all are doing that specifically, but then you're also helping to provide food to a number of other organizations exactly. that are helping throughout Nashville. We do, and, and all those collectively is about 3,500. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that great? I mean, I'm just, I'm so excited that we can help that many people. It is, but it's still, it's heartbreaking. Well, it is. You know, when you when you and drive downtown and, and you see these people and you think to yourself sometimes, I mean, at least I know I do, mm. I think to myself, I could be one or two paychecks away from being on that line. And that's all of us, right? Yeah. You know, we really are. And I think sometimes, and you've been under the bridge, the, oh, yeah. the, the only thing I think that separates you and I from a lot of those people is that we have family that we can bounce back to if we need to. And a lot of these guys, you know, they lose it just like you and I could, and they don't have any place they have else no to go. There's system. a lot of those people out yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Now, how can people get involved? Because this is something that, you know, I do... Okay, granted, in my faith system, they tell you not to stand on a street corner and say, oh, look at all the good things that I'm doing. Right. I'm willing to give up the quote-unquote glory in that regard if I can motivate a couple of other people to come out and do this. Good. So I thank you for you know giving me the opportunity to come out and serve literally yes. alongside you down there under the bridge. Thank you. But how can people get involved? Because this is something I'd really like to see. There's, there's Literally, there's metalheads out there under the bridge that come down there, and that's sometimes their one meal a day. Uh, and how can we as a community, because that's what this is really all about, is if we're going to be a community, we need to be involved outside of the stage, outside of the rehearsal room, right. outside of the recording studio. What are things that the metal community can do to get involved, and how do they get started? Good question. And, you know, and you're thinking, okay, he's a pastor, so he's probably going to say, we need your money. And honestly, we really probably don't. I mean, it takes money to do it, but we, we really do pretty well. I mean, Trader Joe's mm -hmm. uh, supplies most of the food for us, and we're just about to get all the Aldi's food in town. Right. And so I think we're doing pretty well, and we still have to buy a few things. But, you know, we really need are just people to spend time with people. And that's what I'd ask for the most. You know, come down under the bridge and just spend time with folks. You know, help us serve people. And those of you that cook, man, we could use your help. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. Because there's a lot of preparation. <laughs> my uh, my 82-year-old parents do a lot of cooking. That's right. Which has been great. It's, it's unbelievable to sit there and watch them week after week yeah. doing what it is they do. Yeah. And knowing you're, you're going to be having a, a 60th birthday this yeah. year. And here's your parents out here doing this, exactly. too. So it's, it's, it's yes. amazing. To sit and watch been. that. Absolutely. But for the folks who would like to get involved with that, uh, when are you doing this? What times? Okay. And where can they get the information? Well, you know, thebridgebunch.com okay. is our website. But, you know, the best thing to do is just come on down. The Jefferson Street Bridge, Jefferson Street, uh, and 2nd Avenue is right where we're at. Come down on Sunday at 2 o'clock and just hang out with us. Just come and see what's going on. And, you know, people are afraid of the homeless and about the, you know, you want to don't, don't want to go in dark corners and dark alleys, but really these are people just like you and I who really appreciate it when somebody cares about them. Right. It's just another opportunity to fulfill that family requirement that uh, we have as a community because right. it's like I say, we are metal, we're family, and we've literally got brothers and sisters that are down Absolutely. under that bridge Absolutely. that could use people like you. Yes. So, yes. Hey, we'll be back in just a minute. And we're going to be talking a little bit about the local scene and about how to kick things up and unite a scene. So stick around.
Hey, it's Ray with National Metal Bands. Thanks so much for watching this episode with Pastor Bob Beeman. As you've seen in the previous segment, I tend to be a regular under the Jefferson Street Bridge in Nashville, Tennessee, helping to serve. But you know what? I would love to see you there. You know, the weekend of the Music City Mayhem Awards, there were over 150 people who showed up looking for a meal. And the workers, well, there definitely wasn't 150 of them. We really could use the help. We really could use you. Won't you make a difference? All the information that you need to get involved is at www.thebridgebunch.com. Thanks. Welcome back. We're here for the final installment with Pastor Bob. Thanks for sticking around and checking out National Metal Bands. It's always a pleasure to have you on board with us. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. He does. <laughs> <laughs> How could you be more sincere? I know. It, it worked for me. I believed you. Well, I know I believe uh, you because I also have an understanding of the credence of some of the things that you've done in the past. Mm. We alluded to some of the stuff a little bit earlier, mm. but I want to see, can we tie some of this into the local Nashville scene? Oh, absolutely. I know you yeah. uh, came out and you did a, a big favor for me. In fact, that was when we really first started to connect, was mm. a little bit before the National Metal Band's one-year anniversary right, right. show back in September. Which was a great show. Man, I enjoyed that. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, Any memories of the show that stuck out for you? Yeah, Piranha was mm -hmm. a great band. Three Minutes to Die. Three Minutes to Live. To Live. <laughs> I've got the three minutes. You got the three minutes right. We're great. You know, there were just some really good bands there. I really enjoyed them. And uh, I'm excited about what's going on in Nashville. You know, it was, it was kind of dead for a few years. And I am excited to just to see how things are picking up and people are getting involved. But the greatest thing reminds me, honestly, mm -hmm. of what it was like in the 80s because we were more of a family then. Okay. You know, I remember some of the bands during those days. If you had five bands on stage, you know, three of the bands were helping this band set up while a couple of the bands were helping another band tear down. And everybody got involved with each other. And it was a family. You felt like it was a family. And I think things changed in the 90s. They changed, you know, for a couple of decades. But that's what I like about what I see happening in Nashville, is that I think people are really feeling like a family again. That's why I'm so excited about the, the whole thing that you're doing, Ray, with Nashville Metal Bands. And really, I feel that community. And, mm -hmm. you know, people come up to me all the time and say, Pastor Bob, I, I saw you at the show. I, you know, I've read, uh, you know, your, your Facebook, I've, you know, whatever. And, and it's just amazing to me how quickly people connect. I love that. I know one of the things that you and I have had a chance to, to chat about because, again, we've had a little bit of a relationship and yeah. the changes within my band, Oblivion Myth, we're not a Christian band, but we've decided to be a band of Christians when we right. re reformed. Sure. And so we decided, well, if we're going to do that, then let's go and actually get a band pastor. And, oh, I know Pastor Bob, I wonder. And we yeah. appreciate that you've, you've decided to do that for Thank us, you. and we appreciate the mentoring. Um, but one of the things that you had mentioned when you talked about national metal bands was just that, the family aspect. Yeah. And I remember there was a quote uh, that you had said, and, and I'll just paraphrase it, but it was something to the effect of... What really matters when you're working within the confines of a band is what you're doing off stage. Mm. You're only on stage for 30, 40 minutes at a clip right. and rehearsal studio for a couple of hours, you know, a month mm -hmm. here and there. What are you doing outside of that? Exactly. And I know for one of the things that I see when I talk to some of the bands out there, there are some that really do have a sense of family within their own unit. And there's mm -hmm. others that, well, we get together and jam once in a while and then we play a show. And the rest of the time, they don't see them. What, what is your take on that? I mean, do you really think that that's yeah. a core key element to I helping build the scene? I love that question. <laughs> Thank you. Because really, this this is really one of my soapbox. Okay. Talks. So oh, ready. I found a soapbox. You okay. Did. <laughs> a hill to die on. Here we go. <laughs> I know. Which is also another great thing. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> you know, these guitars around us do not make very good spouses. And, and I don't think some people know that. You know, there's so many times when I have done marriage counseling with people, and the wife's complaint is, my husband is married to his guitar. Wow. You know, and we all know people like that. Yep. 
you know, the family isn't first, the guitar is first, the music is first. And I think it was in that reference, Ray, that I said, you know, you're on stage 30, 40 minutes. Um, you can't build your life around that and you can't define your life by that little bit of time that you spend on stage. You define your life by your family, by who you are, what you believe, what you enjoy, the kind of person that you are morally, the kind of person that you are experientially, the, the kind of uh, aspirations and the kind of passions that you have. Those things are really important and it's that strength that you carry to the stage. But you can't carry any kind of strength from the stage to anywhere because it doesn't translate. And the person that you are off stage is the most important person that you can be. And I think people don't get that. Right. You know, when we're trying to rise to the top, when we're trying to become a rock star, you know, we forget that it's lonely there. Right. And, and you you're not just foundation. saying this as, as a band pastor. You're saying this as someone who has run uh, intense records, for example, yeah. and needs to make sure that your artists are able to perform Absolutely. and that they have everything secure so that they can get out there and give it their best. Absolutely. And you've helped mentor and rise up a number of bands, as we've discussed. So the advice that you're giving is not just, quote-unquote, spiritual advice. I mean, it's just plain common sense. Well, and it also, you know, it also makes very solid bands. If the band members are happy, if they are secure in their own worlds, right. if they have strong family ties, if they're doing well, the band is doing well. But, you know, if a, if a marriage breaks up, many times the band breaks up, too. You know, emotionally it can be devastating. There are all kinds of things that happen. And so, you know, the, the success of a band, and of course, we've seen a lot of bands that have been successful, that have had pretty horrible lives. Right. They are the exceptions, not the rule. Right. And they're usually pieced together and yeah. held together and bribed together and <laughs> and and alcoholics and drug addicts and very you know troubled people many of them. the kinds of things that you don't really want to trade a few dollars for no you don't <laughs> you don't it's not worth it is it right you know we all have that dream of what it's going to be like right when we make it it isn't it isn't reality the reality is if you've really made it. You have those strong ties off the stage, not on. Yeah. All right. Well, you heard it here. That's uh, some words of wisdom. I suppose we should all pay heed. I know I'm listening, sitting here asking the questions, but definitely taking some notes. Well, Pastor Bob, thank you so much for mm. coming by. My pleasure. And for hanging out with us. Thanks. And uh, people can come up to you and just talk to you if they see you out at shows Please and things. Yes. And hit you up on yeah. Facebook. Facebook, and, and just go to PastorBobBeeman.com, and all the links are there. And the other thing just yeah. that I want to throw out just for you is I know that a lot of people are really gravitating towards a daily video podcast yes. that you're doing uh, called Pastor Bob Daily, right? Pastor Bob Daily, right. And what's the best way for them to find that and um, to get in contact with you for various things? Actually, PastorBobBeeman.com. Pastor There's okay. a link there. Or just YouTube, Pastor Bob Beeman. And, and that's Pastor Bob, B E E M A N dot right. com, right? Yes. Okay. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Ray. It's a pleasure. Good to Absolutely. know you. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Hey, thanks for staying with us. And thanks, as always, for watching Nashville Metal Bands.